There's no point in Chris telling you about this van because he's sleeping in a bag on the floor. I didn't think it was fair for him to have to explain the comfort and the luxury of this van when he's not experiencing it, and I am. That's sick, that. <laughs> now, I need to keep this short and simple, but Siesta Camp has hooked us up with this van for a really good price for this trip, so thank you very much to Siesta Campers. If you are ever in southern Spain or Malaga and that kind of region, that is where they're based and they can hook you up with one of these super cool VW Californias. It's got a fridge, it's got a two ring gas hob, it's also got a sink and it's got cupboard space for all of your crockery, all of your pans, all of your pots, all that kind of stuff. It's got a kettle, it's got a mocker pot, it's also got a little cupboard in the back that stores all your bedding in. It's got an electric pop top, sleeps two in the top, two in the bottom as well. It's got an awning on the side there, it's got a bike rack on the back there. It's a little bit dirty because it's been on out in some dusty roads, but this thing has been keeping me very comfortable, very cool, and yeah, it's been really good. You dirty dog. <laughs> He's <laughs> evil. He's evil. <laughs> Cheers, Dad. Bye. Bye. See ya. Thanks for trusting me with expensive camera gear. Sure. No one else does. I have taken this race very differently to any other year. For me, it was about finishing it. It was about enjoying it ultimately and having fun, being comfortable, being able to keep riding. Last year, I used a Cervelo Aspero 5. It is their racing gravel bike. But this year, as I've already said with breaking the wrists, I wanted to ride something that was comfortable for me. The reason why I went for a drop bar hardtail as opposed to flat bar hardtail, for me anyway, the drop bar position was more comfortable on my wrists. This is a Cervelo ZHT5, which is Cervelo's hardtail mountain bike, uh, which they designed in conjunction with Jumbo Visma. I ride a size large and the frame is wrapped with plastic wrapping from a company called Ride Wrap. The finishing kit on this bike is from Envy. So it's an Envy stem, Envy gravel handlebars, Envy seat post. And the saddle comes from Gebbio Mize. This is the sleek saddle, which I've been really a big fan of since I've used it. It actually makes the frame a bit more slack, which means that it handles more calmly than it would do if it was a 100 mil travel. And ultimately, the more travel on it actually was more fun, if I'm perfectly honest. Wheels come from Reserve. I'm riding a Reserve 30 on the front, built up with a Sun 28 Dynamo. So that's a Dynamo that's been designed to use for mountain bikes. I am using a Dynamo Lite and setup, which is from k Light. I really do like their product range. They are expensive, but I like the fact that it's just plug and play. You don't have to solder or cut any cables. Everything just plugs in. Tires come from Schwab. The front is a 2.35 Racing Ray. The rear is 2.35 Racing Ralph. Schwab actually recommend that you use these tires as a combination. That is a more grippy tire on the front and a faster rolling resistant tire on the rear. It works really well together. Lots of people have been asking how and why they got white logos on them. And basically these are the ones that they give to pro riders and somehow I got a set, so it's kind of cool. All of the bags come from Tailfin. Top tube bags, frame bag, rear pack and down tube bag, it's all from Tailfin. White stuff with Tailfin indicates that it's prototype bags, so it's stuff that we're developing and testing. Some of it goes into production, some of it doesn't. As you'll see with the top tube bags, there's a production one and a prototype one on the bike. They're slightly different, but the idea is very similar between them. In terms of the group set, I'm riding a bit of a mishmash of stuff. Shifters are Shimano GRX Di2 shifters. I'm a huge believer that on events like this, electronic gearing is the way to go. Just take a, a battery pack and a charger or a spare battery or something, something to be able to charge your stuff. Running a one by system that I am, I have all the shifting done up and down the mech on both shifters. So if I'm holding something uh, in my right hand, I can still shift with my left hand, the rear mech and vice versa. And also with the GRX shifters, you have little buttons inside them, which you can use to control your Garmin or head unit, or you can use it to shift up as well. So I use them for going up and down the rear mech as well. The crank set is an XTR 12-speed crank set with a 32 tooth chainring on it. The 12-speed and 11-speed stuff 
works as far as I've found fine together in this context when it's a crank set with an 11 speed chain and 11 speed set it just seems to work fine. 170 mil length it's what I ride and everything else so I don't I wouldn't want to ride a different length on that. Pedals are Garmin Rally pedals, dual sided power meter pedals. In terms of data quality I think they're brilliant they work really well and they're easy to change the batteries if you need to. The rear mech on this bike is an XDR Di2 11 speed rear mech which will allow you to fit up to a 46 tooth cassette on it so 11 to 46 was the range I had on the back. The XTR Di2 rear mech comes with a clutch on it and you can turn it on and off if you want to but I just leave it on all the time. Rear wheel is a reserve 28 so it's a reserve 30 on the front built up with a dynamo and a 28 on the rear. It's basically a slightly lighter rim with the 30 rim. The spoke count on that is the only spoke count that works with the dynamo hub. And then in terms of what is in the bags and everything, this rear pack, which is a prototype I've been testing with Tailfin, it effectively mounts with rubber mounting systems and then like a support through the saddle rail. But what I took this year was my trusty Patagonia down jacket. Instead of taking a full sleeping setup, I packed some Mount Bell down trousers and that effectively with the down jacket became my sleep setup. A friend of mine, had these in Atlas Mountain Race and I thought they looked amazing and the fact that they fold up to that size means that they're considerably smaller than a sleeping bag because if I was taking a sleeping bag I'd probably take a down jacket anyway to ride in so that combination worked really well. A Gore-Tex Shake Dry rain jacket. I've tried many rain jackets and I keep going back to this one because it is legitimately very waterproof. They're really expensive the fabric is really fragile and Gore-Tex have also discontinued them, but it's a great rain jacket. Spare set of bib shorts. These are Atticus Adventure bibs. Chamois really good, really comfortable. I get on really well with this pad. They have got the side pockets on the leg, which in the left one I was carrying a GoPro and the right one was basically being used for an assortment of food from Pringles, Oreos, Sturka gels and bars to pretty much anything I could find, like a massive pack of Haribo at one point. They do also have pockets on the bib straps themselves in the back. The rest of the sleep setup was basically an air mat, which is, this was an Alp kit cloud base air mat. What I personally perceive is the best bivvy bag I've ever had was the Outdoor Research Helium Bivvy. The Helium Bivvy is, des is designed to be a first of all, a lightweight bivvy, but it has a tent pole in it so you can lift it off your face and you can otherwise fully seal it and close it or you can use a uh, like a mesh another pair of socks spare socks because it's really nice to put new socks on and that's everything in the rear pack sunglasses that i use are from sun god these are the area glasses with the iris lens which is a tinting lens but i also then use a stringy thingy to effectively hold my sunglasses in place and then when you're riding along you can just hang them on your neck and stuff and you just don't have to worry about it it's quite a nice thing to not have to think about helmet that i used and always use i should say on ultra stuff is a laser genesis but i like this helmet because it's very vented the ratchet system on the top is super adjustable uh, they have little reflective stickers on the back of it so that's quite nice and it weighs nothing the light was recommended to me by a friend called Liz and it's a silver, I don't know what one it is, but it's from a company called Silver, Swedish company, uh, battery pack sort of straps on the back there. And then I mount the front light there and it twists, which is quite nice. Now this black top tube bag is the final released version from Tailfin. At the moment, it literally has in here one and a half Sturka SLT 07 salt tubes and some chain lube from Dynamic it's a dynamic all-round lube. These salt tablets are like the largest single serving tablets you can buy as far as I know on the market. Now this front one on the side pockets here is full of uh, SLT05 sachets from Sturka with caffeine in them. The left side effectively has the same of them in it. The production ones don't have this mesh on them which personally I feel is a bit of a shame. I think it's really useful but it is what it is. And then inside here a battery pack which is plugged into the whole dynamo setup to allow me to you need a current regulator which K-Lite make and the current regulator allows you to plug from that into a battery pack and then you charge from the battery pack 
So battery pack, spare GoPro battery, the current regulator from K-Lite, uh, set of headphones, just Apple wired headphones. And I have in here, I did say the cables, I think, to charge stuff. And lastly, a very tiny Leatherman. It's got everything on it. A multi-tool. I've got this one from Silka, which I really like. It's expensive, but works great. And my granddad's pen knife. Three little quick, easy grab tools, which are kind of useful to have when you're bikepacking. This is a prototype frame bag from Tailfin. They will be releasing these at some point in the near future. This is uh, mounted using the same rubber strap system that are used for like the down tube bags. Now the lower half of this one is just purely for a water bladder. It's a three litre bladder, so loads of water there. At no point this year did I feel like I had too little water. I kind of tried to rely on using the hydration vest on my back. And then the water that was in the frame was kind of like essentials afterwards. Always with salt tablets in it. And then the one on the back I always put in carbohydrate solution in it as well. Now the top half of this frame bag effectively was filled with electricals. So in here is like a charging cable for the exposure lights, a spare DI2 battery, DI2 charger, iPhone cable, USB-C cable, USB cable, basically cables, cable salad. Keep it in a plastic bag so if it gets wet as it did in the first day it's all safe. I also had like toiletries in here which for me is effectively a uh, chamois cream, antiseptic wipe or antiseptic cream, chamois cream, toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, bug spray, like a tiny bug spray because I get bitten and some like mini first aid kind of stuff, like stuff just to help you out. Uh, I took some long finger thin like mountain bike gloves just in case it got cold and actually they're quite nice to ride in the daytime with. Didn't find them too hot or anything. What's quite nice about this bag is it's got a zip inside so you can make it one massive compartment if you wanted to. And then on the rear side is a full sleeve down the side which had baby wipes, keeping everything clean. The more salt tablets, these are actual pill ones that were given to us at the start. A gilet or wind vest, whatever you want to call it. Uh, emergency blanket foil one, which I also didn't use. Some spare, a sunglasses sleeve case thing, which I used quite a lot actually to clean the sunglasses. And then lastly, a bunch of cable ties. And then lastly, this bag on the bottom is basically full of spares, tools, that kind of stuff. So in here, I have got a tiny little bit of rag for cleaning chain if I need to. Two. Schwalbe Aero Than inner tubes, mountain bike ones, a Dyna plug. I do genuinely think this is the best way to solve a tubeless puncher. Some spare Dyna plug plugs, a Park Tool chain breaker. I use this because the ones that come on multi tools I just don't think are good enough generally if you need to break a chain and it doesn't weigh anything, it's fine. A tiny Silka little torque wrench. This thing is amazing, it's bloody expensive but it's really, really good little tool allows you to just make sure everything's tightened up nicely. I, I always stress about over and under tightening stuff. So for me, it's just a thing which I like to have as a sort of peace of mind. One CO2 canister with a sleeve on it. Two Schwalbe uh, tire levers with some electrical tape on them. This tiny metal tin has spare brake pads in it. Batteries for Garmin Rally pedals. And this little metal tin has a Apple AirTag chain links, tubeless valve removing AirTag just to make sure that the bike is tracked more than anything. And then this bag, which I call the odds and sods bag, basically has spare random things that are quite useful like mech hanger, bolts, uh, part of the mech um, CO2 canister thing, uh, something so that you can pump up your tires from a like a car or gas station pump loads of spare like valve bits. Just, it's a generic bag of spare stuff that I always make sure I pack for bike packing trips and races. It means you're kind of covered if you need a bolt or something like that, or you lose something. Uh, this is a wolf tooth uh, chain thing. And I have on here spare chain links. They sort of magnetically sit inside that. And then some more Dyna plugs, cause you never know, you can never have too many. And tucked inside there in this packet really neatly is some um, tubeless, glueless patches, I should say. It's what they're called, Schwalbe glueless patches, which will work fine with the Aerodan tubes as well. 
And then lastly, the front of the bike, I say I've used the K-Lite Dynamo setup, but Nick from Backyard lent me this monster exposure light, which is freaking amazing. I really want one, but I cannot afford it. But it's so bright, it's incredible. Garmin 1040 Solar bike computer is what I used for basically everything now. It just doesn't run out of battery and charges itself. One more thing to mention is that with the, the bike itself, I used a 180 rotor on the front and a 160 on the rear. With the XTR two pot brake calipers, which work absolutely fine with the Shimano GRX shifters and a mud guard because it rained. I think there's everything on the bike. And then in terms of what I was wearing myself was Atticus bibs, Atticus base layer, Atticus jersey, socks from Atticus, shoes of Shimano, S-Fire, mountain bike shoes. In terms of like food and stuff, it's always a case of just grabbing as much as you can, relying on space food, which is cycling food, uh, but trying to just carry as much as I can and eat proper food as often as you can as well. So even if it's like a five minute stop to eat a bocadillo or half a slice of bread, it's also quite good just to get real food in the system, especially if you're not trying to race it and do it in two days or whatever. If you're taking a bit longer time, making sure you're getting some real food is really good. But yeah, hopefully that was useful. That's everything I took. That's the bike. If you have any questions, comments or anything like that, please leave them in the video and I will reply to them as quick as I can. And I'll put a box here somewhere where you'll see the video from last year so you can see the different bike setups. Uh, please like, like and subscribe and comment and I'll see you for the next one. Cheers.